119.8 miles per hour, hardest hit home run of the year, fourth in MLB history. What the Meredith Brockovitz, who covers the Yankees that? for Yes. Holy cow, this offense has been fun to watch. What's it been like watching them work? Well, you look at that home run in particular, blink and you're going to miss it. Not often do you see a ball fly back off the pole in spring sign. In fact, in 11 years, I don't think I've seen that in covering the Yankees. And Aaron Boone was asked about that shot in particular after the game, and he kind of paused and just said, Man, I, I think he's weird. <laughs> he's weird. Like, that's Look not that. humanly possible to do that on a consistent basis. And then added he's a unicorn as well. Now I spoke to John Carlos Stanton after the game and asked him about those comments, and he kind of just looked at me and smiled. And I said, John Carlo, you know, we are never going to know what it feels like to hit a ball so hard to barrel it up. It comes off the bat at almost 120 miles an hour. Can you explain it to me? And he said, I can't even explain it to myself sometimes. But you know what? It's working for this Yankees offense. Yeah. That's leading the league in home runs right now. But while everyone focuses on the home runs, it's not just the homer. They're finding ways to win in different ways, manufacturing runs more so than they did in years past. Aaron Judge as well. I mean, when you look at him, you've watched him for years now compared to this year. Are there any differences that stand out to you? I think first and foremost, he's healthy. I think what we've seen with Aaron Judge, when he's on the field, he puts up the numbers. And, you know, you look. I look at the defense. He's playing right. center field. Center field. Aaron Boone won't Six, say seven. Aaron Judge is your starting center fielder, but look at some of the plays he has made out there. He has looked beyond comfortable, and since day one, he has said, I want to play center field. He played it in college. He looks comfortable out there. And you look at how many times he is in the lineup at center field on a weekly basis, and I think it's pretty clear he is going to continue to be put out there in center field. And then you look at the offensive component. The guy has been unreal. And it seems like once, twice, maybe three times a week, somebody will be new in the clubhouse and they'll ask him, Aaron, are you dialed in? Do you feel like you're really <laughs> dialed questions. in? And uh, Aaron will just kind of give you that smirk and go, ah, not quite there yet. Still don't, trying to find it. Listen, the job's miss- the best player in the game, but you could certainly have the argument right, right now that Aaron Judge is the best player. You can have that right now, just the way he's going about his business, playing center field, every at bat. But I want to focus, those two guys, they get so much love and rightfully so. And it's always been, as the Yankees go, Stanton and Judge got to take them. But there's a lot of guys in this lineup. Matt Carpenter, obviously, great story. Glaber. Glaber's playing. Glaber's back. eyes light up when you talk about Glaber. Because because I hate seeing guys that, that awesome. It's hard to hit 30 bombs in the big leagues. And then the shortstop then killed him, in my opinion. And then, you know, it fell off a, off a cliff. But he's back at second base. Clearly, he was not comfortable at yeah. shortstop. It was affecting his offense. We saw that last season. And they moved him back to second. And he looks so much more comfortable defensively. Offensively, you mentioned it. He's finally back on track. And you really look at his lower half. He's in a much better position to succeed consistently. And especially when he shortens his swing with two strikes, Glaber yeah. is pretty deadly. And you look at him in situations late in the game, walk-off situations. And he just seems to thrive. He loves the pressure. He enjoys being in those situations. And if you have guys like that producing in the order, and you even go down a little further in that order, guys like Joey Gallo finally starting to swing the bat a little bit better. Aaron Hicks as well, switch hitter. Yankees are pretty tough, one through nine. And how about Higashioka? We were laughing earlier with the silent treatment, but he got going. I can never tell what's going on with Trevino. Scratch from the lineup. Is that just super precautionary? What's the story? Well, he was having a little bit of a back issue. He played through it on Saturday and, and quite frankly, played through it quite well. He had a home run in that game. Uh, But the Yankees saw the schedule. They have an off day today, and then they'll play 20 in a row. So just not taking any chances there. He has meant a lot to the team. This was a late addition, if you remember correctly. He's living his best life right now. And, I mean, he is loving Loving life. He told me he was a secret <laughs> Yankees fan growing up. Loved Derek Jeter. He was at the premiere last night. He also. Come on, really? Of course he was. And I mean, his eyes, you know, bright out and bushy tail meeting the captain for the first time. So that was nice to see. But, you know, offensively, he has found his groove. And defensively, pitchers love throwing to him. He does a great job calling a game. He is in there all the time on his laptop, on his iPad, constantly studying. And I said to him one time, what are you putting in that notebook? Like, he's constantly writing in his notebook these additional notes that the front office doesn't give me in preparing for a game. So he prepares 
on top of preparing what they prepared, uh, and he always knows where he wants to go throughout the course of the game. But one of the things that I think is really cool is the way that Higashioka and Trevino have worked together. There isn't often that you find two catchers that are essentially competing for time out there that help each other so much. And you talked about the silent treatment last night. Higashioka went on to hit two home runs, and he said after the game, it was after his first at bat that Trevino came up to him and said, Hey, I think I noticed something. You're not being as aggressive aggressive as you've been in times past. Be more aggressive, generate more power with your lower half. He did that, hit a home run, gave credit to Trevino for trying to help him out. And the same on the other side too. So kind of a cool relationship they have there. But Matt Carpenter said something on the field yesterday too. It is nine verse one when you look at the lineup. It is really a team that's come together well. They're not about the individual stats. They're about trying to be there at the end. And you can see it on the TV screen. The schedule, I'm looking at it, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> it does not. No one wants to see them, though. I'm sorry. I, I know. But this looks like a test, right? Yeah, Tampa Bay coming to town. They always pitch good. the Yankees tough. Wow. Tougher at Tropicana Field, but still not going to be an easy task. And they're in Toronto, filed by three more in St. Petersburg. And then the Houston Astros coming to town. It's no secret those two teams don't like each other. I don't know if you knew that, Lauren. Wow. No, you know that. I know. <laughs> so that's play out. A, Wait. A fun one. 20 straight. Is it 20 straight? 20 straight, yeah. Hey, Robert Flores, you hear that? Uh, yeah, working I, twenty I, straight I'm games. Aware you don't like when the show gets long because of a toss show. They're working twenty straight over there. He yeah. can't even do all the segments. <laughs> He's taking a segment <laughs> off. Wow! Hey, hey, oh, oh. hey. Oh. Meredith, they can make fun of you, um, fun of me, but I don't know if you can. Nothing but love, my friend. You're my favorite weirdo. <laughs> That's right.